Hi guys, it's Debbie, and today I would like to speak about Ready Player One, Steven Spielberg's latest movie. Ready Player One is a science fiction film set in a dystopian future in which most of planet Earth's population lives on the edge of poverty. Our main character's home is located in a stack of old trailers, the unemployment rate is very high, criminality is widespread, and the only thing that helps humanity to escape from this reality is the oasis. A virtual reality people can access through visors and a a set of accessories such as haptic gloves, haptic suits, which give the player a very realistic experience. This virtual reality is more of a game, an incredibly detailed one, and since its creation it grew to include hundreds of planets, thousands of objects, creatures, spells, means of transport, and users can create their own completely customised avatar. The story opens with the death of the creator of this reality, James Halliday, which leaves the users of the Oasis a quest to complete within the game, offering the winner a staggering prize. So many people, including our main character Wade and his friends, dedicate most of their life to completing this mission, while in the meanwhile the huge IOI corporation, a large industry in the virtual reality sector, tries to gain control over it with any possible means. Ready Player One is based on a novel of the same name by Ernst Klein, and if you have read the book, you will realise that it is profoundly different from the movie. The characters are the same, the background to the story is the same, Oasis, Mission to Complete, Evil Corporation, but from that premise onwards the storyline that is presented in the film deviates completely from its source material. Having read the book, when I started watching the film, I must admit that I was disappointed. I couldn't figure out what was going on, I thought I'd missed something huge in the book, but once you just realise that it is just simply different, you enjoy the movie in itself rather than just seeing it as a book to screen adaptation. And also the novel has a level of detailing which would have been impossible to bring on screen. There are whole chapters dedicated to the characters completing even one step of the mission. It covers all of the main character's background, everything he thinks or goes through, his relationship with his friends, all the origin of the Oasis, information about James Halliday. There is no way that could have all been brought on screen. And there have been examples of vast worlds successfully brought on screen, for example the Harry Potter saga. But in that case the staggering amount of information was given to us a bit by bit over the course of the years. And even in that case the last book had to be split into two films to avoid cutting out too much. So although I personally prefer Ready Player One as a book, today I'll have to speak about the film in itself. All in all, after the first minutes of adjustment, I enjoyed it. It fulfilled my geek dreams, it is an interesting story, and I liked how the whole concept was visually brought on screen. The idea of a virtual reality, especially of this size, can be tough to depict, but everything seemed to fit in place, from how the characters interacted in general, the difference between real life and that slight online delay, to the smallest details such as how the characters collected points slash coins, and I especially liked how it showed how the virtual reality worked in a practical manner. What I mean is that it is easy to let our mind wander off and envision all the beauty of the simulated world. But how does it work in real life? How are the users moving around in their real physical space? How does the whole login in and login out process work? What do the haptic suits look like? If there is movement in the outside world, how does it affect the avatar in the game? Or what does the voice sound like? Does the avatar look like the user? And as a matter of fact, I would like to speak a little more about this last point. Because one of the main concepts surrounding the world of the Oasis is that of escaping from the real world and whether the oasis has become your real world, it has replaced your regular life. And one of the ways of escaping and creating a new life is by creating, customising a beautiful avatar or a powerful one. In general, an improvement of the self. For example, Sorrento, the leader of this evil corporation trying to take over the Oasis, has an imposing matra-like character, while other users hate the idea of revealing their real identity, what they really look like. They don't feel confident in showing what they consider flaws, and they create what they find a more beautiful depiction of themselves. And I think that this idea of hiding and nearly using the Oasis to replace real life is not highlighted enough in the film. Any of us which use social media, use the internet in general, know that we are always hiding behind a screen. Our profile pictures will always be our best ones. The makeup I'm wearing, the setting of this video is all carefully picked. I could easily say everything I said in this video laying on my bed in pyjamas with no makeup on. On the one hand we feel safe in this fake reality the internet offers us, 
On the other hand, do we feel like a massive sheet and want to escape from it? So it is a very interesting concept in general. And when speaking about the film, I don't want to reveal too much to avoid spoiling the plot. But let's just say that, for example, when speaking about beauty and hiding, self-confidence, one of the main characters carries out this whole idea in a very superficial manner, when in reality there was a possibility to speak about it on a deeper level. Another thing I didn't really like in the film was the portrayal of the concept of love. Again, without revealing too much or comparing the film to the book, the way in which love is presented is very cliche in a cheesy romantic film manner. This portrayal of love alongside other details such as the enemy, always oblivious to everything the good team is up to, including characters just easily hiding behind things, makes me think that it was all included to appeal to a younger audience, which might not have felt intrigued and interested in all the 80s pop culture references, the general retro vibe, and might prefer just a more dynamic and engaging story. But this set aside, I enjoyed the rest of the film. I found the story curious, I loved the characters, the soundtrack, all the pop culture references, and for all the film lovers out there, there are some very interesting cinema references. I don't think it's one of Spielberg's best films. And I might be wrong, but I don't think it's a film which will maintain its popularity over the course of the years. But it's definitely a film which explores a new and modern topic, which I imagine will be receiving ever more screen time because of how our society is evolving. Already many products, films, series are speaking about the idea of virtual reality, of the direct interaction of humans and technology. Black Mirror has been shown this for years. So in general, to conclude all of this, I, with this film, I was torn between the excitement and the fact that I was expecting so much more from the film. But all in all, Spielberg did have the tough job of tackling a hefty source material, and he had to bring it on screen in a way which would have appealed to a varied audience. So as I was saying before, younger audiences, people who have never read the book, or just people that wanted to enjoy a film. Let me know if you saw Ready Player One, what you thought about it, with a comment down below. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to subscribe for more movie-related content, and I'll see you soon. Bye.